My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about, there's a question, um, it's a good topic. So I'm going to split this into two, so this is part one, um, part one, and this is two strokes. Uh, the reason why I'm just going to split it into two is because um, there's quite a lot to speak on, but less to speak on um, two strokes, more to speak on four strokes. But, uh, someone asked, they said, I'm not under, I don't quite understand the mechanisms of how uh, the cylinder uh, gets lubricated. So for a two stroke you have a transfer port, it doesn't matter how it works, if it's straight direct read like that or it's whatever, it doesn't really matter. What happens is, is obviously that your um, fuel is pre-mixed either automatically by some kind of pump, uh, oil pump or whatever, or you've actually poured it into your petrol can and you have a crank down here and what have you and um, there's a few things that happen but it's, it's all basically the same thing you have this mist of uh, fuel and oil that's flying around your engine and um, there's times when uh, the, this, this oil mist hits your piston so it directly contacts the side of your piston and when um, this, the air and the fuel, because the fuel is highly volatile, the oil isn't as volatile, so basically every time it bashes into something, it's like, um, so ma imagine like water, imagine you had like a massive, you could just fire water, big gushes of water, like a massive super soaker, but it had paintballs in it, you know, when you go paintball in the little capsules, and imagine if you the water hits a wall, the paintballs are going to hit and they're going to explode against that wall, it's kind of like that as in the water can deviate and the air can deviate uh, quite violently but the paintballs because the momentum they have and their inertia, their resistance to wanting to change speed or direction means that they'll bash straight into the wall. So as the air creeps round or whatever or splashes back the oil is going to basically deposit itself on the side of the piston. So this helps because we do want um, oil on the side of the piston skirt. All pistons rock you've got a single pivotal point and even if that pivotal point where your wrist pin is is directly in the centre you are still going to get rock, rock because you have uh, a lateral component which is your con rod going from one side to the other um, down the, from down the centre line so you are going to get rock this way and you are going to get rock this way we call this piston slap and that's why you see uh, marks on the side of your piston skid marks if I can fucking find a piston um, ah, fuck it, you know what I'm talking about. He says that and it keeps on looking. So, yeah, so basically, here, this region here and this region here, this is really quite a clean piston, but them two regions there, or cross hatch, um, are where piston slap occurs on your side skirts there. So, that's what you get. So, that's one thing we want to do. The other thing that we do is obviously is when the piston has dropped even further than that, so when the piston is at bottom dead centre, and when most of the cylinder filling occurs, so when the piston's down here like so, um, the same thing happens, is the fuel and air mix comes in, generally you have some kind of angle into your ports to increase turbulence and flow, um, uh, to increase turbulence and swirl and all that stuff. Basically, again, it just crashes into the cylinder wall. It can come back and crash into that cylinder wall, and so on. Um, and this basically does exactly the same thing. It deposits fuel on the side of your cylinder, and then you know your piston rings come up and they'll squirt, they'll scrape quite a lot of it off. Um, but it works the same when your piston's at top dead centre. Is that fuel and air can actually creep under your piston and slam the inside, uh, underside of your cylinder. So basically, that's the mechanisms. Um, which in a sense is kind of like, I don't think there's actually a particular name for it, but it's almost splash lubrication. It's you are um, using the air as a carrier in a sense. And this is the problem, or one of the problems with two strokes, is the fact that they have this kind of uh, oil situation, you know what I mean? Um, because one of the... Uh, the the problem with this system is obviously it's just a bit random. There is no real control to it. There's no oil direct oil feed. 
you know so when you look at your cylinder like this if you have all your transfer ports like this is that you'll get a lot of splash of oil on this side on your exhaust port side but you won't get that much oil splash on this side not not to the same degree so you have an asymmetric um, oil delivery which again isn't perfect um, but this is why you don't have um, oil scraper rings on your two strokes because there is not enough oil to literally have to wipe off the side of your cylinder wall um, there are none of the return holes and uh, the oil passage return holes that you have on four stroke pistons so if I get that piston again wherever the fuck I've just put it how can I put something down and it just fucking vanish on me <laughs> it's like that 10 mil spanner you motherfucker it's right there right in front of me so you will see oh not on this piston that's quite strange I never noticed that this piston doesn't have them oh that's all oh that's strange so there are no oil return holes on this piston this is off a car I think there's no oil return holes at all that is strange but yeah there's oil return holes um, is there any other massive piston example? No, I'm not lifting that fucker up my beer all week. Um, but yeah, when you look at your two-stroke piston, there you can see here's an excellent example of piston slap. You see on the side that skirt there, she's not had a good time. This piston hasn't had a good time anyway, but... Um, yeah, there's no oil return holes or anything like that because they are literally there just isn't enough oil. And that is the problem. Um, with two-stroke reliability and uh, longevity is the fact that you do have to start replacing your pistons um, more frequently and your cylinders more frequently um, for the simple fact is the wear is um, generally higher and not only that, it's more an extreme condition more, um, you know, a, a bang every 360 means that uh, heat soaking and temperature the environment inside your cylinder is generally more violent than just say a four stroke one um, because there is this thermal cycling of rapidly cooling because you've just basically just splashed loads of fucking fuel in there and then it's rapid heating because of combustion and then straight away cooling then combustion then cooling then combustion this is why you'll see a lot more cracking you'll see a lot more um, thermal fatigue um, in uh, two stroke engines you'll see cracks it doesn't help there's also fucking giant holes in the ports but they're just propagation to where they're, they're just stress risers propagate, propagating places um, regions for cracks to basically start um, two strokes you know they are a lot more violent um, the conditions that these materials have to go through are a lot more um, a lot more strenuous on the parts and so on and this is why it always comes to you know there are a lot of limitations with two strokes hence why manufacturers over time then decided four strokes are the way to go it's a lot more manageable it's easier to control each cycle it's easier to optimize each one of them cycles and it's just generally more reliable and all the rest of it you ask anyone who had a two stroke car and there are a few back in the day but you have a two stroke car they are fucking horrible <laughs> You know what I mean? And that's why manufacturers have tried and they don't work. But it, sometimes you've got to think, sometimes it's a bit stupid that these manufacturers did try because kind of like engine 101 is that you don't really want to build a higher torque application two-stroke. You know, you have to do some extreme things like they did with the Evan Rude and stuff like that. And we will go into more into that in the future. Right, hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.